All right, welcome to another uh, tutorial slash demonstration for the NIOS 2 processor. Um, in the last couple of videos, we have done uh, custom IP, which is one way to speed up the NIOS 2 uh, infrastructure with some custom pieces of hardware that connect into the system. This time, we're going to talk about another way to... Um, increase our speed on NIOS 2, and that is the NIOS 2 actually has the ability to add custom instructions to the processor. So today we'll do a really, really simple example of adding a custom instruction to the NIOS 2. Um, there are technically four types of instructions. We're gonna be looking at the simplest, which is called a um, combinational uh, instruction. Um, and it's gonna be something really, really simple. We're just gonna take two inputs, and them together, and give ourselves a result. Um, so let's get started. We'll start, like always, with Cordis, and we'll do a new project wizard. Um, we'll put this on our D drive and our video demo folder, and I've already created a folder here called NIOS Custom Instruction. Um, we'll call that the name of our project as well. Um, we are a 5 CSX FC6 D6 F31 C6. And we can choose Questa and go ahead and hit finish. Okay, our project is created, so we'll go ahead and fire up the platform designer. That will allow us to create all of our system. While that is happening, we can go ahead and look at our custom instruction is just a very simple piece of Verilog. We've got two 32-bit inputs, one called data A, one called data B, and a 32-bit result. And all we're gonna do is and data A and data B together and ship out the result. So with the combinational custom instructions, we get that exactly our, those three, two inputs and one output. We get 32 bits of data A, 32 bits of data B, and then we get a 32-bit result. So that's our custom instruction. It's fairly straightforward. Um, Questa, I mean, Platform Designer is now open. So we'll go ahead and start. We need a NIOS 2. So let's go grab our processor. All right, we'll just take the defaults for that processor. We need some on-chip memory. So we'll go grab some on-chip memory, and I want a little bit more than 4K, so I'm just going to add a zero to the end that gives me 40K. And then we need a JTAG UART. This is the base system we've been wiring up for um, all of our systems to this point. Um, and we're just going to take the defaults there. I can go ahead and name these and wire up our base system like we've seen in the past. We'll call that SRAM and we'll call this debug and we'll just wire this up like we've been wiring it. Um, no real differences there. So that's our base system that we've been doing. So the next thing is, is we need to go ahead and create our custom instruction. Um, to create our custom instruction, we're gonna double click on that new component just like we did with a custom IP. Um, the difference is last time we just went for it right here. We need to change our template this time. So we're gonna go to our templates and we're gonna say add NIOS custom instruction slave dash combinational. Well, that's the simplest of the instructions that we can do. So that's the one we want. And then I'm just going to call it my and. Um, we'll call it my and. Uh, we'll put it in a group. Uh, maybe we want it in instructions if we're going to have some categories. Um, custom uh, and instruction for NIOS 2 processor. And of course, put in an author, and then we need to go grab that file. I've already copied that file into my folder. It's under my Verilog, and it's just that custom instruction that I already showed you. 
And then, of course, we need to do that analysis. So there we go. Our analysis happened. And we have a couple problems which were pretty much expected. So if we go over to signals and interfaces, the first thing we need to do is delete this. Um, and the second thing is it tried to recognize this as an Avalon memory map slave. That's not what it is. It is a custom instruction slave. So we'll change that. And then of course, because it tried to bring it in as an analog or an Avalon memory map slave, it misidentified all of these. So we just need to go in and re-identify them. Data A goes to data A, data B goes to data B, and our result goes to result. So now that those are all done, we should not have any more warnings or errors. I can go ahead and hit finish. And I will say, yes, I would like to save that. And then we can add in our custom instruction. So there's our custom instruction slave. If we look, we've got data A, data B, and result. Um, doesn't look like much. And the interesting thing is, is there's only one place to wire this. So custom instructions go into the custom instruction master on the processor. So we will just go ahead and add that in. And you'll notice it's opcode zero. If I had another one of these come in, it would be, uh, as soon as I wire it in, it would be opcode one, right? We can have up to 256 custom instructions in our processor. So um, that's how they're um, identified is via that opcode number. Um, and then I'm just going to go in here and I'm going to say this is my and just because I like to have everything named uniquely. Um, and then we need to go ahead and assign our base addresses and we need to assign our vectors like normal. And then we can go ahead and we can save this. No, not as my and this was. Um, NIOS custom instruction. There we go. Okay, now that we're saved, I can go ahead and close that. And then we need to generate the HDL for this. So we'll just take the defaults and generate that HDL. Okay, our HDL is generated. Uh, we can go ahead and hit finish and like normal. As soon as we do that, Quartus is going to say, hey, you just created IP. You should probably bring that into your project. So we will go do that. That is in our NIOS custom instruction and then our synthesis folder. We want that quip file. All right. The next thing we need to do is our quick compile, otherwise known as a analysis and elaboration. Uh, we do that so we can assign the clock pin, obviously, and we can also take a look at the RTL as soon as that is done. Okay, our analysis and elaboration is finished. So now we should be able to go and assign our clock. Um, that is on AF14. And then while we're at it, we can take a look at our Netlist viewer. So this will show us our NIOS processor system, but the part we're interested in is over here. This is the custom instruction master and our custom slave data A and data B coming over our result feeding back and then the result feeding out. Um, so there we go. And if we look at our custom, we should see 32 AND gates because that's all we're doing, right? We're ending every bit of that 32 bits coming in. So there we go. That's all well and good. Now that that's done, we can go ahead and start our full compilation. And of course, like normal, while that's happening in the background, we'll go work on the software. So with that, we'll fire up the NIOS 2 software build tools for Eclipse. And we're going to want this in our NIOS custom instruction. We're going to create a new folder called software. There we go. And I'm just going to go ahead and hit OK there. All right, here's our NIOS Eclipse up. We can go ahead and maximize that. And we need to create a new board support package in an application. 
So we'll do that by clicking the top one from a template. And we need to go grab our SOPC info file, um, video demo, NIOS custom instruction. That's the one I want. So I can go ahead and hit OK there. All right, there's our NIOS custom instruction. I'm just going to call the pro software project custom instruction. Uh, we want hello world small, and I'll just go ahead and hit finish. Okay, our projects are created. We'll go ahead. I always like to uh, do a build before I make any changes. This just ensures that the projects got created correctly. Okay, our project default built fine. So we'll go ahead and we'll open up the Hello World Small. The other file we're going to need to look at is our system.h. So we'll go ahead and open that up as well. And we'll get started just by deleting everything in our Hello World Small. Um, let's go ahead and do some includes. So let's bring in the regular standard I.O. We gave ourselves a little more memory so we could. And we're also going to need that system.h file. And then, of course, we need a main. Um, and we said we were going to return an int, so we will. And then our while true loop so that we don't actually end. All right, so we're dealing with um, some 32-bit datas. So let's create a 32-bit variable for them. Um, let's do an unsigned int a. And we'll set a to be all f's. And then let's do one for our b. And let's set it to be all ones. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And then we need one for the result. Let's initialize that to zero. So there's our variables. Uh, let's do a welcome. Um, hello from Nios 2. Demo with custom instruction. Give it a new line. All right, so let's go ahead and do this. We want to set our result to the output of our custom instruction. So how do we call our custom instruction? Well, for that, we need to go over here to our system.h. And we're just going to scroll down a little ways. And we're going to find this section right here that's labeled custom instruction macros. Um, so here we go, right? Here's how we call it, right? Altera custom instruction, the name of our custom instruction and its number. So my Altera CI, my and underscore zero, and it takes an A and a B and it returns the result. So let's copy that macro. We'll pop that macro right there. We're going to send A and we're going to send B. Put a semicolon at the end. And now we can just print out our results. So let's do a printf. A is equal to 0x percent x. B is equal to 0x percent x. Result is equal to 0x percent x. Uh, let's put a new line, and then we're going to send A, we're going to send B, and we're going to send result. So, as we said earlier, um, if we know AND, we're going to AND an F and a 1, right? Our result should be all 1s, because it takes two 1s to make a 1. So, our F and our 1s should produce all 1s as a result. That's our program. Let's go ahead and save that and do a build. And in the meantime, we will go back and check on Quartus, which is done. So we can go ahead and fire up the programmer. Let's do a save. Then we can do an auto detect. Yes. And we want our NIOS custom instruction .soft. And one more time, let's do a save. Let's bring up our board. It's in its default state. We'll go ahead and 
hit the start button and we'll watch the board program. There we go. We didn't assign any output, so everything should be blank. Um, we were 100% successful. Uh, so that's all good. Let's go back and check on Eclipse. Looks like we're ready to go. So let's do a right click and say run as run configurations. And the first thing we need to do is create a new run configuration. All right, let's make this window a little bit bigger so we can see it. And we're going to call our configuration custom instruction. Now let's go to our target. We'll hit refresh now that we're programmed. There we go. We can hit apply. And then we will go ahead and run our code on that NIOS. All right, we should be just about done. There we go. Hello from NIOS 2, demo with custom instruction. Our A was all Fs, our B was all 1s. And as we can see, our result was 1s, just like we expected. So it's a really, really simple uh, tutorial slash demonstration about the simplest thing we could do for a custom instruction. But it does illustrate the power of those custom instructions that we can do with our NIOS 2. Um, that concludes this demonstration video. So have a nice day.